Good evening. Welcome to a special called session for the Asheville City Schools Board of, Direct, uh, Board of Education. Tonight, Thursday, June 15th, 2023. Um, we are here to discuss tonight the proposal um, for chart wells for our school nutrition. We do have a quorum, so I will ask um, for an adoption, for a motion to adopt tonight's agenda, which is essentially discussing and voting on this proposal. I move that we adopt the agenda. Second. It's been um, uh, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, we, um, agenda is approved. So, um, first of all, I wanna thank Derek Edwards and um, <clears throat> April Dockery for taking some notes for us. If those of you tuning in online and here in the room, you'll be able to see on the screen um, as we are discussing things that we can put up on the screen to reference um, as the conversation goes along. So thank you both for doing that. Um, so, um, Tonight, we just want to get into that conversation. We started on Monday after that presentation. Um, we do need to take action tonight um, on this proposal, um, either to um, engage in Chartwells and, and create a contract with them or um, choose the, the no. We would maintain what I would call the status quo. So um, it is, it's one of those special called sessions where, again, we don't have like a set of list of agendas or items. I guess we'll just start with um, <clears throat> perhaps from Melissa or Georgia, do you have anything more to share or we can start on the board side and if anything's come up for board members. Um, I'm leaving that open to us and y'all can let me know what you'd rather do. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I would love, Georgia, if you would help me understand what you sent us, which for reference to everyone else was a, um, was a record of our food service costs, I think, over the last several years. But I'm sorry, I'm, I'm new enough to this process that I didn't understand what that really meant. And now I'm trying to find it, so let me find it again. Um, there we are, the prior year audits. So I guess my question is, when it says net position at the end of the year and it's in parentheses, that means negative, am negative, I right? Negative, yes. Okay, that's helpful. Now, my next question is, I don't see total costs here. So can someone enlighten us about how, why we think this, this contract is gonna save us money and how much money it's likely to save us if we were to adopt it as currently proposed in the RFP? Great question. The first thing I'd like to say is this figure shows the net position, which means after revenues, expenses, this how they, how they ended up on the books for the year end or and then starting the next year. The intent is that going with a food service management company is that we are no longer in the red year to year. And how do we know that we won't be in the red year to year? Why, why do we, I know that the RFP contains some kind of uh, um, guarantee, assertion, a guarantee, but is it a guarantee? And I couldn't, I couldn't really tell. Is that very, the first year? Is that second year? Is that? in perpetuity? So the uh, contract is a yearly contract. Okay, So it is renegotiated each year. The intent is that we do not, uh, that we come out even or make a profit each year after this year. Most now, LEAs that have gone with chart wells uh, realize a uh, profit or a uh, even year? Um, so. Can you give your break? Hmm? Can you give your break? You can go ahead. <laughs> well, my concern, <clears throat> Georgia, is um, the people that are working there right now, can we place it in a contract that Asheville City School have certain amount of staff to work at each one of our uh, cafeterias and they are con 
I don't want to say control, but they are managed by Asheville City School. And if someone uh, happened to retire or leave, that we still control that spot? Or do we have to just put all of those replacements in by uh, our new vendors? Which one can we do? So if we're talking about the contract. We're talking we about the employees. Anticipating and contract for this coming year. Um, first, I'd like to say that Melissa Bates, her position is required that it stays. She is the lead for everything that happens in our school nutrition with or without chart wells. Um, our RFP uh, that, that um, they all submitted proposals for contained the part that our current employees stay with us. What about future? I mean, you said our current employers. Yeah. Yes. Stay with us. Mm -hmm. Now, do we still have that status if somebody leaves? Do we still keep, let's say the Asheville High got six people. Let's say that one of them happened to uh, go somewhere else. Do we still have six seats or do or, or that particular one goes away from us? Georgia, you want me to jump in there? Okay. Food service management company would also use what we call the standards for meals per labor hour. That's how we determine how much labor we need at each school. Yep. And that's so, based on participation. So I think his question is about who, who those folks actually work for. And my understanding of it, and Chris, I know you work with two systems who, who have this in place, plus I don't know about others, that whatever this board would ask, we would put in that contract. That's if this right. board okay. wants those employees to stay as our employees, that can be done in the contract. Yeah, I, I think it helps if we back for a minute and just back up to, to 50,000 feet on how this final contract will work. I think it'll help you, you board members and, and also help your staff answer questions. So your district put out a request for proposals and it had very detailed contract language in it as well. And then your committee got together to review all those proposals. This is one of those times that you as board members are not asked to review the detail from every single proposal. You have a committee that does that, brings you a recommendation. The final product will actually have an order of priority and I think this will help you. First priority will be the con any contract changes that we make after this evening. So this all assumes that you approve the recommendation of Chartwells for a final negotiated contract. So the first priority will be any changes we make to that RFP per what you talk about tonight. Then the second priority is what's in the RFP, what we ask these companies to offer to us. And then third priority is their proposal, if there's anything different in their proposal, but that's the last priority. So going back to your original questions in reverse order, the RFP that you put out, Mr. Warren said that you would maintain your current employees. They'd be grandfathered. They would remain Asheville City School employees. But Chartwells envisions hiring more employees immediately to increase participation, to put in the serving lines, to put in the signage, to do tastings, to work to try to increase the participation. So they would be, according to the RFP, hiring new employees to come do that as part of their startup. Then if you had an Asheville City School employee retire or decide to take a different job, per the RFP, Chartwells would hire that particular position. So your current employees would be grandfathered, but any new employees would be hired by the, the vendor, and, and you can get into that this evening, the pros and cons of that. But pursuant to a negotiation, they have said, my understanding is, I wasn't there Monday night, that they would be fine if you wanted to keep all of the hiring with the Asheville City Schools. The only thing I wanna make this board aware of is if you do that, then the break-even guarantee, which was the first question, will have to probably be renegotiated because what this company is obligating itself to do under certain terms is make sure that you end up in the black, that you don't have to take local current expense money 
to supplement your child nutrition. Well, to do that, they've made certain economic assumptions. And one of those assumptions is they'll be in control of the hiring of how many employees, future employees are needed in order to get the participation level up. So if you change who is hiring and how many are hiring, then you affect the other parts of the contract as well, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you for I have explaining a, that. Sure. I have a question then. So does our current RFP include information about um, parity between their employees and our employees in terms of compensation and what is in our current RFP? The RFP, to my knowledge, doesn't explicitly state parity. I may be incorrect about that, but that is something that I also understand they are willing to put into this final negotiated amount. In other words, an employee hired by Chartwells would be hired at the same rate, at least as the current Asheville City employees, so that that parity's there. The only thing they can't guarantee, and you'll understand this, is benefits. Our current employees have a state retirement. There's no way that a private company can match that state retirement. On the flip side, there's a, this is the yin and the yang. There's a pro and a con to everything. They might be able to offer a higher hourly rate. So in some situations, you'll have an employee who doesn't, does not see themselves retiring from the state. Maybe they've got a spouse or someone who has retirement or other things. They want that higher hourly rate. If you maintain control of all hiring, they can't make that choice. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying they can't make that choice. So we can put that in the contract. Can I ask, when you bring up that example that they may pay a higher rate, do we know if that is likely to be true? We won't know until they get in and start working. I don't. I'll give you an example. This prior year in, I know, uh, two school districts, they actually had the increase to the $15 an hour, and Chartwell's matched that to make sure the $15 an hour is being matched. But then at least in one district, Chartwell said, in order to be competitive and get good managers, we need to charge a higher rate. Uh, or pay a higher hourly rate. And that was agreed to with the school district. It was factored into the per plate cost. So I think everyone on the board knows there's a very tight labor market right now. So the rates they're offering have to be competitive uh, in that respect. And I, th I think, if I'm not mistaken, that the RFP basically said competitive rate. I think that's right. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I'll just voice a couple of things, and this is just as we're having this conversation. One is I loved, I really am excited about the food options and a lot of the different um, um, methods of sort of accommodating different people's tastes and interests, and it looks to me infinitely better with no, I promise, no criticism of the current efforts to feed our children well, our students well, it looks really exciting to me. And I think that, you know, offering our students, I mean, I, I can imagine that we will get a lot of increased participation when you start adding vegetarian options that are, that look good. Um, and at the high school when you've got a little cafe and when you've got, you know, better signage and just something that looks a little more like if they were going to walk into uh, Panera or something. <laughs> Look up and, um, so I appreciate that. I also appreciate all of the work that the committee did. I am not pleased, but I understand that this is just the way it happened, that we're asked to make this decision so quickly. I hope that in the future we can avoid this situation. And I know that this is not, I know this is not normal for the board, so I want to acknowledge that too, that what I'm saying is you know, sort of different from the way this board and most school boards have operated always. You give it to a committee, they give you a recommendation, you say yes or no. But I feel like when we're going to privatize a portion of our government services for the first time, as far as I know, that's huge. Because what I half would anticipate or I'd fear or something is that janitorial services might be next or that some other service um, I'm just saying this out loud. This is my fear. It may not be, but this is what tends to happen in my experience as a federal employee is once you start privatizing some of it, a lot, some other things happen. So that's one concern, but it's not enough for me to want to vote against this necessarily. The second concern is our cafeteria workers are educators. 
and I want to say that loudly and clearly, our cafeteria workers and our janitorial staff are educators. Our cafeteria workers see our students for in the elementary setting six years. Ms. Pearlie is an institution at Dixon. I've known her for a very long time. So it, giving up control of the hiring makes me very nervous because I want to make sure we're hiring people who know how to interact with students well and know that they are educators and appreciate that part of their mission in serving as cafeteria, our, our school nutrition staff, is to get to know our kids and to know their needs and to care about them outside of the food they put on their plates. So um, all of this gives me pause when I think about turning over control to Chartwell's um, and at the same time, in the other hand, I'm weighing the really lovely benefit that I think is important, I mean, hugely important. If our kids aren't eating well, um, if they're not feeling nourished, I even, I even think about the conversations they can have if they're actually enjoying their food. Like, I, I kind of think they're going to be different than if they're just kind of, you know. So um, I'm not sure what the answer is. I, I wish that we could come up with a hybrid, like, I, I don't mind Chartwell's having some oversight over our hiring or, you know, I know in some cases in my context of my work, the contractors will give us, you know, several candidates and we will choose the final candidate. Um, and I don't know if that's possible. I certainly will say I, will, I would not want to do this if we cannot offer them parity. Um, I, want the, the, I don't want employees having different rates of pay in the same place doing the same work. I don't like that idea myself. Um, would that be, if everybody else is in favor of it, would it cause me to vote no? I don't know, but that's something I would like to see if we can. Just a reminder that our employees in the same position. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Based on their experience and everything else, they may be paid differently. I understand that. And thank you, though, Georgia, for that. Amy, let me ask you after you said that about what Chris explained that some staff may like that we could find ourselves in a situation where at that entry level that a Chartwell's employee would earn a higher hourly rate because they will not have a generous state benefits like that long-term retirement track state employee. When you think about your thoughts on what that would mean about parity, what is that? I would say at out? least parity. <laughs> at least parity. Yeah, like I would say that, that at a minimum they should be paid what our other classified employees get paid for the same amount of experience, yada, yada. But of course, if our current employees are going to be offered a higher hour, hourly rate by Chartwells and they want to take advantage of that, they should be able to. And I want to be real careful about all of this. I am not saying that Chartwells is going to offer a higher hourly rate than Understood. what your folks are making. The example that I think is happens from time to time is that a current employee gets the experience, the training, and is able to get into a management position, and maybe that's at a higher rate. But I, I certainly don't want to give anybody the impression that, and I'm looking down the table when I say this, that Chartwells is represented that they're going to offer a higher hourly rate. Um, and then on the, the hiring part too, just to keep in mind, my understanding is that they have a contract person for Chartwells who will be assigned to the Asheville City Schools. You will of course have Ms. Bates um, and that the hiring decisions and any separation decisions are all made in tandem. In other words, the, okay. the resumes are reviewed, the interviews are done together so that you have a seat at the table, yes, and uh, it is your child nutrition program and all final decisions are made by your child nutrition director. So that if a position became available, the first conversation is going to be, do we need to backfill it? What are our needs? And then they would work together as a plan to find somebody, try to identify somebody. And then on the separation side, it's not something we like to talk about, but obviously they are making real-time decisions about the needs at the school. If somebody doesn't work out, you have the ability to tell them they're not working out and Chartwells will make a change for that employee. Or if Chartwells decides that they need to separate with an employee, that is a Chartwells action. That's not something that comes through Asheville City Schools and committee meetings to review and things of that nature. So. Thank you. <clears throat> I, I, I would just like to 
I've, I've heard it, but I, I, I would like to take this moment to ask, um, have we gotten assurance that we can only commit to this next school year and then reassess as a board, acknowledging that this process was initiated a year ago and I, I know that we all appreciate all the hours of work and reflection that have gone into this entire process. Um, just you know, knowing that we are we've come in and have to make this decision, and you know, I just I would like to know, without question, that that we can commit to this for next year, and if we do not choose to renew, that that's without penalty. It is a, definitely a one-year contract, one-year one time. Be made in April <laughs> if we're going to proceed with the contract for the next school year. In April, yes. So we have a majority of next school year to to See give some. See how it works out, okay. and then I think yeah. the decision Let has to be made in April. The, okay. Thank you, Melissa. The regulations on this are set by the state mm -hmm. and by the federal government. Yeah. So it's it's pretty airtight. <laughs> Yeah, but I also want to I want to lift up what Eliza said about there's no penalty if we choose not to, right? Because that's like right. a what, financial penalty if we choose not to. With, with one except, let's fly at thirty thousand feet again. Right. Um, you are asking a company to come in and get your participation up. So I've already told you what they envision doing immediately is bringing more folks to work, changing signage changing the way that the cafeteria lines work and investing in some capital that you need. In other words, equipment, things of that nature that they will come in with your folks and do a review and they may decide that you need some new equipment for them to be able to, to make the food they need to make and get it up. That is outside the per plate cost. So if they spend, and I'm just gonna throw, pull a number out of the air, if they spend $70,000 on improving some capital some some you know, equipment for you you have an obligation to pay that back and it's amortized without any interest at all over a five-year period of time and if you don't renew then the worst case scenario is that you may have to pay them back some money it's not a penalty but it may be that you didn't purchase that piece of equipment yet you've only paid one-fifth of it mm -hmm. so the worst case scenario is you decide not to continue with this there could be some costs that you've got to pay back because it hasn't run the life of the amortization but, but there's no requirement that we would have to purchase that equipment no that again is at the it's in combination with you but again it is a true partnership because they're saying we really believe you need this to get the job done and get participation up but yes dr cosby's correct that's an agreement with the school district for that. That's so, the only thing I can think so, of. So, you know, say, let's say that they, they do believe that we need a new walk-in in a, in a school. Do, do they submit that to us as a board to approve under our financial reports? No, that, that it would be something that the administration would work with them on because okay. it's already laid out as a possibility um, of possible equipment. So it wouldn't come back to you for final approval. Okay, it wouldn't so there wouldn't be a delay you. in acquiring right. what is necessary or deemed necessary right. for. Right. But you have to ask for it. You have to agree to it. One thing I'd like to ask for next year, and I'm going to say it now because I'll forget all about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, my my brain is. Um, I'd like to say highly efficient. It, everything that it doesn't <laughs> need right now goes away. So. Um, I would like to say that as we move into next January, February, March, I want to I want to make sure we're talking to the staff in the cafeterias. I want to make sure we're asking students and also faculty and our our principals what they think about the system so that we're not coming up on March or April even and say you got to make a decision about whether to renew. I want information by then. If you could just kind of put that on some calendar for January or February. Um, and then in the future, I request that even when we have committees like this doing fabulous work over time, please just give us updates so that we know kind of what's happening and that to the extent possible, I know this process started before I was ever on the board but um, I'd love to have, I just don't, I, you know, I've said it enough. You know what I'm trying to say. Thank you. 
<laughs> Just some updates, so it doesn't feel quite so sudden. Thank you, though, and I really deeply appreciate the work your committee did. I think they did an outstanding job. I love what we got back. And I, I know that Chartwells is, is also very engagement focused. Um, and I, you know, just so that we're not trying to like reinvent the wheel or over communicate with stakeholders in this process, just to echo what Amy's saying, like if they are sending out student feedback surveys or teacher feedback surveys or principal feedback surveys, that we're not then also asking Dylan to create a survey and doubling down, just that they share that data with us. Um, Amy, I, I appreciate you lifting up, and I just want to echo it, that um, you know, our food nutrition folks are educators. Um, and, and I'm kind of thinking about this in, in, in th like a three-prong approach. We've got, you know, the, the in considering this, I've got to think about students and their needs, right? Um, and, and then the financials of this, and then the personnel. Um, and to me, the personnel is the stickiest wicket. I'm not saying the other two are not sticky, but the personnel, of course, is the stickiest. Um, and, and Melissa, I know you know this because you are also an educator, but as you, if, if we choose to move forward with Chartwells, um, recognize that you're gonna be in the room with them as you make hiring decisions to, to recognize what's been lifted up here tonight, and that, that we lift up as a district all the time is that um, the folks who work in our cafeterias um, know our students, all of our students in that building so well. And, um, and so in that hiring, really making sure that we're lifting that up. Again, I know you know this, but I just, I appreciate that you're gonna be in the room with them um, and, and recognize that as we have new people coming on board. <clears throat> um, and, and just because my mind works that way, I'd love to, you know, we've already, we've, we've touched a little bit on financials and all that. I want to just kind of throw it out there. Are there any other questions like explicitly personnel related? Um, I don't want to, again, it's not my intention to control the conversation, but I'm thinking here's a moment because we've been talking a lot of personnel stuff. Are there other like specific personnel questions? Chris, could you clarify? I think you said this earlier, but I want to make sure I understand it. Like you started with, there were three levels, sort of changes to the RFP than what's in the RFP. And have, with our conversation about pay parity, does that represent a change to the RFP that will have to go through some other negotiation or do we, is what's there already sufficient? Right, so what you'll be doing this evening is not actually agreeing to a contract you will be accepting the recommendation of the committee and authorizing negotiations on a final contract that will be brought back to you at your year-end meeting on the 29th. And yes, Chartwell's been asked that if you approve a final contract on the 29th, can they hit the ground running on July 1st? And their answer was yes, that they, they can definitely do that. So things like the parity would be in that final negotiation document so that it's clarified. Because um, I think Ms. Ray raised a good point about what's in there now doesn't mention the at least amount that you talked about. The only um, issue that we'll just have to deal with is you have asked the county commissioners for a substantial increase to all of your classified workers. And if we're going to have a requirement that they've got to match what you're paying current workers, we're going to need to figure out what that looks like in a final negotiated document because you know you get that number from the county commissioners but then it's got to come back to you to make a final decision on pay rates because the county commissioners don't set the pay for your employees you do so uh, georgia and i've had some discussion about that we've got some ideas of maybe putting a percentage in but we can certainly account for that in the negotiations we're just gonna have to talk that through so are you saying that it's not sufficient to require that they as i mean as compensation levels rise that they they it, must right. match that's no, not that, sufficient. that's totally reasonable we just don't know what they're going to rise to we're negotiating something when we have no idea what the final pay rate for your employees is and going to be i think that's the nugget that's, that i'm getting at is yeah. this negotiation going to be about the actual rate in dollars or just the 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 concept of the rate in an ongoing way i understand what you're saying there's a labor call <laughs> that we've represented to Chartwells. I believe that labor cost was about a million sixty-nine thousand or a million ninety-six thousand, something right in there. 
we've got to kind of anticipate how that bottom line labor amount can increase so that your break-even guarantee is still in place. Because we're raising their costs, which raises the issue of whether or not you'll be able to break even. And we don't know what that number is going to be. So we're going to have to negotiate on that big number. Well, we do know what we put forward to the commissioners. We know You know what you intend to do with it if you get it all. Right. So that's a ceiling. <laughs> but if you don't get it all. Then but doesn't that represent to... a ceiling that we could communicate right. to Charles? It does. It does. Okay. Yeah. Great point. It yeah. does. Yeah. And we talked Thank about you. that. Yeah. I think we were talking, we, we, we had some discussions on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that they know it's going to be within a certain range, likely. Correct. And, you know, we're not, we're only talking about, I mean, on our end of it right now, I think you and I talked today, Chris, 38 employees or so. So about 38, 39 employees. So I would hope that that wouldn't increase the costs by so much that we could lose the guarantee. But I will say that if the guarantee, you know, if we lose the guarantee by whatever it is that is the overage on that, I'm fine with that. And it's a reduction. You don't lose it all together. It's a reduction. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I, I want to pay those employees the same. And if it means that, um, it means that we, instead of making money that year, we break even, or instead of breaking even, we get, we have a, instead of a 48 or $150,000 deficit, we have a five or $10,000 deficit. Maybe that's not realistic, but it doesn't, I just, that's, you get the point. That's what I'm saying. I appreciate that concept and to check in, like, is that something that that they would entertain in a, in a more structured way that we, what we value more than the profit or break even is the reduction of our deficit while maintaining parity and compensation. And I think the way as a, as a company they do that is they have calculated the per price plate mm -hmm. and they factored into that the ability to make sure first of all that you break even and then obviously some profit on top of that so when we sit down and talk to them about this marginal increase in the labor costs i don't see that being a big issue in other words they're they're meeting your concern by having that break even point um, and it's just a matter of what are the factors that go into it and I appreciate the comment that, you know, they say if your labor costs go up, there can be a reduction in the per plate. If you don't, you know, if you miss a month of school, there can be a reduction. There are all these factors that could happen that would reduce the break even. That's factored in. Yeah, and I, I think and we that's push. Fair. And yeah, but we yeah. push for the break even because that's what we're work, looking for. Right. So in negotiating, of course. We don't yeah. want to lose. We're, we we go we go forward with break even and parity, and then see see what happens uh, from there. Okay, I got one more question. Are we raising the price in our cafeteria prices for this upcoming year, or are we going to lower the price of our cafeteria work? I mean, of our students that's going to be. The meals, yes. Are we going to raise them or lower? I do not anticipate raising meal prices for students. Oh, for, that, oh, for, oh, for who? For, for staff or for students? So um, we, as a district, would in, make a recommendation to the board whether to increase meal prices. And we do not anticipate doing that for this school year. For this school year. school year. For neither for the students nor for the staff, right? Correct. Melissa, can Did I we? check in when you say that you don't anticipate that? Is there any component of that that's in the RFP or in what they've, like the, around the price that they control? No, the okay. vendor does not control that. That's something we decide as a district and the board approves. Didn't, I'm Let's sorry, say, Melissa yeah. or Georgia, didn't we vote on something Last couple of months. August. Last August for this school year or for correct. the for the current school year? Okay. Yes. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going crazy. And we were competitive with right. other school districts surrounding us. We was about a twenty five cents cheaper 
the and that was inflation districts. and everything yes, we had to account for that all the supply right. chain issues right our cost increased what i'm just Thank curious because i don't actually know what is the cost of them and the reason i'm asking is i'm curious to compare that to how much we're paying per plate from them what is the cost for our meals? so for elementary school it's 325 middle and high is 350. okay and adults we charge them a la carte pricing and i assume that chartwells would be taking into consideration what we currently charge when projecting a balance, a break even. Mm -hmm. Yes, we had to provide that right. information. Thank you. So, because we keep bringing up break even, <clears throat> I'd love some clarity on, uh, you know, Chartwell is a private corporation, so they, they are gonna wanna turn a profit. I understand that. Um, so I guess I'm just trying to figure out, now I'm moving into the financial things, side of things. Um, if they're in, I'm just going to throw out a number. I know that we just were sold at 325 is the meal price, but just so my simplistic brain can, can do this. Let's say that the price of a meal is $5 and let's say that they increase enrollment for whatever we want to say, participation by 10%. Of that extra 10%, that's $5, I would assume they, they keep all of that? Like, how do, when, when we say break even, how do we have the possibility as a district of actually earning and making money off of this proposal? I'm still confused about that. Let me address that. Yeah. So you're not going to, the way this is envisioned, first and foremost, is that you no longer would be in the red. That's the intent, that you're not using local current expense dollars to supplement any deficit in your child nutrition program. So you're not in the profit business to begin with in doing right. this RFP. Right. The break even is their calculation so that you don't have to contribute any money. In other words, the program is self-sustaining and they are able to cover all expenses by the revenues that come in. If they broke even, then arguably they're not making any profit either. So they have a contractual for-profit incentive to try to do much, much better than break even to try to return money. In some districts, they've actually had a guarantee of money in the black over and above what it costs to operate the program. You are not being offered that because you've been in the red. So job one, year one, is to try to get you at that break even position. They don't want to be asked to leave after one year. I mean, this is a business proposal based on some projections. They hope you get you to where you need to be and then continue to do better. Right. So, you know, the break even is just, it, it's not their breaking even. Break even means you're not supplementing. It's two different issues. Yeah, no, I, and and I that's get why that. it's confusing. And I appreciate it, yeah, because it feels a little bit like wool over my eyes because wouldn't, I mean, I know we just had this conversation about parity, pay parity, and all that. I don't know if I ever want to get into a contract with a private company where I'm going to say, oh, it's okay if we lose money again. Does that make sense? Like, shouldn't it, like, if we're going to go with these guys, shouldn't it always be break even at the minimum? Like, shouldn't that always be part of a contract? I don't know. I'm just, that, that's a no, rhetorical no, no, no. question, I, maybe, but. I understand that, but that would be an RFP that says we, we have to break even. Right. And that's a whole separate request okay. to these groups for a for a district that has a history of being in the red. Gotcha. I mean, you got to walk before you can run. Sure. Okay. So, um. Oh, go ahead, Liza. Just to to piggyback on that, <clears throat> the the dollar amount that that we've been given for half of the school year is it isn't it above what we have already been paying? Are you talking about the management fee on the exhibit uh, B? 450 something yes, thousand dollars. Yeah. That's so, so again, the, the, as or 400 each, something, right. As each meal is purchased, there's $2 and 40 cents that goes that covers the expenses and the management fee. So yes, by the end of the year, they may make more in a management fee because that was only based on meal sales projected for half a year, but it's not additional money from you. 
it's already built into that per plate cost. And to answer the question about the profit, isn't it the case that once we've paid that management fee, we get what else, whatever else is over and above. So if, if it's, if we pay $2.10 or whatever it was per meal over time, and then they get that money, but then the, we, because we have so much participation, we end up in the black, we don't just break even, we get the profit. Am I correct on that? Isn't that how we get the profit? Isn't that how we could, we could do better than break even? Correct. That, that's my understanding is that's how you end up doing better. So is it's, they cover their costs yeah. and then you start. So they, get, they tell us it's going to be $2 something per meal. That's all they ever get, but they always get that. And then they're basically telling us we're very confident that because of us, your, your participation is going to increase so much, you will break even. And you might do better than break even because your participation is even better than we might imagine. Right? Okay. Does that make sense, George? Yes. So, so, so that, I think it's not a like, we, we only want you to break even. It's a, this is our best guess as to how we make a really nice loving profit because we're for profit and you break even at least. Hopefully. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I understand. Yeah. I just, yeah, I just, it's, it, to me, it's like such a, yeah. it's such a weird concept. Like, of course, if we want to, like, we, for all of our programs, we don't want to be in the black, I mean, be in the red. So the fact that it has to be enumerated, it's just, it's just I'm sorry, I just. Yeah. I guess and, the, the only in reason. In future years, you may want to set a, a certain profit minimal level. Yeah. Well, I think what was on my mind and why in that line of conversation that we were having where it's like, well, we, I value parity over being in the black or even breaking even, right? Because we're, when we talk about parity, we're talking about the, the educators in our school buildings. And certainly when I think about how my children knew the, the women at Hall Fletcher who knew their names, who checked on them, like this is important. And so I think, like George, you're almost bringing up the flip side of what I was thinking, which is if in their negotiation with us, they're going to require a certain amount of profit because they are a for-profit, that we would say, like, you can't make, the, we don't, we're not going to enter a contract where they make that profit by exploiting labor in our schools. That's the the idea, like we've been operating in the red for so long and at such large amounts that like we pay a lot of people out of the local funds to make sure that we can do the best we can with people's salaries. That doesn't seem odd to me that we use some, if we can greatly reduce how much we're using in local funds to ensure that staff are paid in a dignified way, like that feels like us leaning into our values. Because it is, I mean, at the end of the day, this is the problem of privatization is that they are they have shareholders that they're accountable to not families and so i just want this contract to be to use every possible tool to ensure that we can continue to value kids over everything else as we bring in a private for-profit company to do work in our schools uh, I, can i ask a, another yeah. question um what about summer meals They have add-ons, they have summer meals, they have evening meals, they have, those are all additional, my, from my experience, those are additional services that the, would, could be added on to the contract. It's not in this particular contract. There are costs. other districts that do that, uh, and then they add it on. And it's the same, it's the same framework. There's a, there's a cost per meal that they, they quote to add that on, but a lot of districts do add that. One district I know adds evening meals in addition so, to summer meals. I, I guess what, what I, and maybe this come, would come at the next stage, so feel free to say that that's the case if, if it is. But I guess what, what I'm looking for is what, what is our all-in cost to do what we are already offering our students and staff and then some for the next year? Just so that we're comparing apples to apples. I guess the easiest way to answer that is as to the school year, it's you pay nothing is the hope. 
And if you add additional services like a summer or evening, again, you would pay nothing out of your current expense. I mean, I, I think to some degree you're wanting to know potentially how much the private company is going to make, and none of us can answer that no, question. No, I'm, no, I don't, no. I, I think the question is, is fair. I think that um, I think the concern would be if it's when you say add on, Chris, it makes it sound like we're going to be paying more or something like for that. And I think the answer, though, the, there's two things I think about it. One is our summer for this summer, I'm assuming we take, we're taking care of as we always have, mm -hmm. right? And so by next April, when we renegotiate this contract, we can think then about adding on for the summer. Um, in terms of evening, it isn't, you know, I don't know how we do the community nights and, and um, our um, United Way community nights. I, I do hope that that continues to be, Homework Diner continues to be available. And I think that may be done from other places anyway, right? Is that, that's not it's through. It's done with a local catering company that's what that I was United thinking. Way. Okay, so that's not, so anyway, um, yeah. So I, I don't know if there are other, but the question is, is fair, which is, is there anything, here's the question. Is there anything that we currently provide from our food services, nutrition, that this contract doesn't anticipate during the period of time that this contract will operate? Gotcha. Ms. Kelly, that, that makes sense. I don't, I do not know about evenings or anything like that. So in the contract, in the RFP, we included um, after school snack program that we currently do and the summer program that we are currently doing. Okay. So I hope they can help us grow that. Okay. And so that's, so there's nothing that you can think of that we provide right now between July and next June um, that we haven't already assumed we're going to do that they're not providing for. Correct. Okay, thank you. Does that make it, it, it doesn't. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mis no I misunderstood as well. I no, apologize. no, no. I, I, I guess what I'm looking at is this attachment B. Yep. And I see that the total per management fee to be paid the FSMC 458,676, and that's from July, July 1 through <clears throat> January. Mm -hmm. So that number, the 458, is covering only half the school year, correct? Correct. So, so what would be the all in? So really, these are numbers based on our participation now. So if they increase participation, that amount will go up, but that also means we're getting more funds in reimbursement. Okay. So that would, you know, we get more in reimbursement for a free child. We get over $4 per meal, and they're just charging us $240. But, uh, and Ms. Kelly, too, if you look right below the two numbers underneath the instructions, mm -hmm. It says the potential vendor guarantees the school district a firm fixed cost per meal equivalent, including a management fee not to exceed $2.40. So again, that fee is incorporated into that $2.40. So unless I'm missing something, the more plates you sell, yes, the more management fee they get, but it's already included, so it's not extra from you. So the so, annual cost, though, would be closer to 900000 Presumably. Yeah, I, I, and I, I appreciate a lot of you bringing this up because this is, again, a thing where I feel like the wool is over my eyes. Why would they not give us an, a full year estimated cost? Why would they stop at January 31st? As opposed to saying, this is your cost from July 1 to June 30th, 2020. These are numbers I provided, and that's when we started working on this RFP, that's all the information I had available right okay. then. We had not served meals for the rest of the school year. Yeah, this RFP yeah, went totally, out in February. So totally, that's a totally logical answer. Totally logical. <laughs> totally, totally, totally want to logical. give misinformation. <laughs> totally logical, totally legitimate. And I also think, I just, I just, it's just, it's a bit baffling to me. And I know I feel like I'm harping on this, but a company of their size who's done this in numerous 
districts across our state can't give us a full year estimate of what the cost is going to be. It's just, I just, it, so, because I think that's what you're getting at is what is the annual cost to us, not seven month cost, what's the annual cost? Can I check in about so, something? Because, Melissa, you said something that I think might help me understand this a little bit better, which is, I think, I want to be rooted back in some of our early learning about grants and that food, the nutrition services is entirely federally funded. We, mostly. Mostly we federally funded. We get a small amount of state reimbursement. A little bit of state Very reimbursement. Small, less than $2,000. But mostly we get, and it's reimbursement, meaning. And the cost of meals that kids, families yeah. pay. So that's why participation is important. We only get funds if a student eats with us. So when they start calculating on participation, it's because they know that the federal reimbursement comes, it's, it's a reimbursement, it's yes. not a um, set amount. So right. the, more, the more kids we serve, the more we get the federal government to pay us, yes. and they're basing everything they do. So for me, I guess when I saw a half year, I'm kind of like, well, yeah, then you just, you can extrapolate from there because the more food you serve kids, the more we get to reimburse the federal and grant, and they're calculating it based on a rate where they know per meal that mm -hmm. they're gonna do well. Right. Okay. So I wanna remind everyone, in that calculation, we still have to pay for our employees, which is part of the reimbursement money that comes back. Um, a rough estimate for um, current employees now with local supplement with the approximate 4.2 increase and benefit increase, we're looking at um, almost 1.3 million for salaries next year for school nutrition. So in essence, we have to make sure that they're, they're assuring us we're gonna get that much and, the, and it's covered, and then above that, they're saying we'll break even. Also, the food costs, all those things. Yes. Mm -hmm. You do. I do want to um, lift up Think, again, just me thinking about finances, that we went to Buncombe County a couple weeks ago and requested you know, a pretty large increase in funding for our district. Um, and here's, an here, here's a place where we can, if we choose to, to go this route, where we can show Buncombe County that we're making some changes in terms of how we can, as a district, start to save some money. I don't think, I mean, <clears throat> I, I'm one of these people who, especially considering that that conversation that we've been having, I hate that almost every decision has to come down to something financial or economic. It really bothers me. Um, and yet, um, understanding that, that that can be a big, um, I don't want to say when, it's just, it's, it's, it's significant. You know, if Buncombe County sees that we um, are doing this, that could go some way towards showing them that this is a commitment to us over the long term that we are looking at ways where we can save money. So just putting it out there. All right, I uh, move that we select Chartwells as our food service provider, subject to a negotiated contract that includes at a minimum the same rate of pay for any new Chartwell employees that are going to work as part of our food service team in Asheville City Schools. Second. And that's good enough. <laughs> are you done or do you? Pretty much, yeah. I was gonna say and, and negotiate a contract with uh, as much as possible with um, break even or more. That's it. And if Go ahead and get a second and then a if we second. can confirm, make sure that covers everything. That was me. Okay. Can, can so. we amend that to include summer meals? I thought it's already in it. Meals are, are okay, in. I, I thought, I thought the add-ons. Absolutely. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Okay. So, 
It's been moved and seconded. I do want to. I do want to see if there are any other questions or things that come up with this motion. Chris, did we do that right, or do I need to do it again? <laughs> so what we are discussing is just the motion's fine. Okay. The motion and second are fine. That gives the authority to go ahead and enter into negotiations. Again, it's not the the elephant in the room, but the the, the tricky thing is waiting to see what the county commissioners right. do. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you know when you look at the guarantee again it says that it is subject to the labor costs remaining the same and, and we're thinking that those labor costs you know may increase so this is fine it's just a matter of how we project yeah. what those costs might be i mean i, I think, think all we, we all we want chris is for you to, to to negotiate the best contract you can that's going to be i'm moving that that's a minimum that we that we sure. achieve that for them for our employees, um, that's we. I think that we're we're authorizing you to negotiate that contract in a way that will include that that guarantee. Now, whether that what they come back with and how we where we end up is something else. But we want to, no matter where we end up, I think it's important. At least I'm, my motion includes that any employee hired by Chartwells to serve Asheville City Schools will receive a minimum pay. That is no less than that that would be offered a comparably a comparable Asheville City Schools employee. Yep. Got it. So again, I just want to see any other comments or questions from the board after that motion, and it has been seconded. Okay, great. So um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Many opposed? So that is passed. So thank you again to this, this committee, and I know James, you were part of it as well. Thank you for um, being on this committee and working so hard and so diligently. Um, we, of course, will revisit this, or the contract will revisit on June 29th, um, which is a nice segue into what we have coming up, which is that meeting on the 29th to discuss the budget um, as it gets passed by Buncombe County next week. Um, I also just want to say, um, in fact, April or, or Derek, as you're looking at this, somewhere on this, on these series of notes is, um, is a statement around the importance of our cafeteria staff um, and that they, however this contract is written, they remain employees of Asheville City Schools for next year, those who are with us right now. Um, and and it's, it's up there somewhere. And so we're just, we're naming that into the room. Um, I know we've had conversations with our cafeteria managers and other staff in the schools and just want to make sure that's loud and clear. You all, you remain a vital and important part of Asheville City Schools and an employee here. Yeah. Thank you, uh, George. I also want to say that I, we welcome continued feedback. And I know from talking to some of these folks that this is not going to be an easy, um, they're not going to receive this news with, with open arms and welcome. However, to their credit, every single one of them that we met with said they were willing to try it, even those who were absolutely not in favor of it. But I want to say that um, we all would welcome conversations with them as, they, as we move into this. I would encourage and I just want the message to be conveyed that the board wants to hear how they're doing and wants to be responsive to any adjustments that we need to make or just conversations if anybody wants to know why we voted the way we did. I'd be very happy to talk with anybody, at least why I voted the way I did. Thank you. And Mr. I would Chairman like to eat there soon. Right? <laughs> I said, I'm going to eat there probably the next school year, right? <laughs> at least once a month, right? <laughs> That's right. Check it out yourself. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to clarify real quick with the, it was a yeoman's work to try to take notes of what all was just said. Yes. So I kind of want it stated that, you know, Ms. Ms. Bates, Ms. Harvey should be able to review these notes uh, to, for accuracy, because yep. there may be people that would request and want to see it. So I, I think that that would be a good thing just for the, for the record, for yep. the board to recognize that these are very rough notes and will be needed to be reviewed by the people who provided the information uh, for, for accuracy. For sure. Yeah, I think no, that's I, the only fair thing to them. They were trying to keep up as, as y'all were rapid firing back and forth. Right. Yeah. Thanks for lifting that up. And again, April and, and Derek, thank you so much for doing this. It's important. Yeah. So <clears throat> anything else from the board? OK. 
Okay. So with that, I'll ask for a motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> it's been moved and double seconded.